Uh, thanks for coming over this, uh, this afternoon. We just wanted to uh, roll, announce that uh, we're rolling out starting September 15th a, a new communications tool that we think will be really effective in terms of uh, getting new ideas in, um, in the uh, effort to reduce criminal activity within the city. We're announcing a the mayor's uh, community conversation, and it's uh, scheduled. The first one is scheduled for September 15th at the Boys and Girls Club. There are several elements to this that we think are, are really important. Uh, one, there will be someone from the community who will speak about why we should all care. Uh, secondly, the chief will speak about all the efforts that the EPD has underway in terms of community policing, and there are a lot of ideas or a lot of elements to their community policing effort that uh, I, I think are quite interesting, many of which I think the general public may not even know about. Then we'll have an expanded idea, an expanded period of time for what we're calling idea sharing. And this will be a, a period of time that we estimate will take about a half an hour that I will personally moderate. And it's literally a chance for people from the community to come and share their ideas and their thoughts about how, as a community, we could be more constructive in making Evansville uh, more crime free. Uh, this is not an opportunity to come and vent about why uh, a friend or relative was stopped by the police for speeding or why they may have been arrested for this or that. This is a very meant to be a very constructive community, di community dialogue. So we encourage people to come to these meetings with ideas uh, so they can share uh, those ideas with us. Uh, we'll also have someone uh, in, from the community who talk about uh, why people should get involved. It, you know, there's the old saying, if you see something, say something. And I think that in today's society, there's probably no greater adage that the police uh, department would really like to reiterate uh, uh, to the community. If you see something, say something. So we'll have someone from the community who will talk about the importance of why we should get involved. And we'll have uh, Prosecutor Nick Herman there to talk about the We Tips hotline. It's been uh, very successful in our community. Uh, we owe a, a deep grat gratitude to Nick and his staff for the effort they put forward to bring this uh, to the community. Um, let me tell you that we'll, we're going to do the, these in each of the six wards. We're going to start in September in Ward 1 at the Boys and Girls Club. I'm sorry, Ward 4, pardon me. The first meeting, Ward 4 at the Boys and Girls Club. The second meeting in October at a date to be determined will be in Ward 2 and we'll schedule the meetings uh, in subsequent wards uh, as, as we progress. Some, some elements of the later meetings may change somewhat depending on what happens in the first uh, couple of meetings. We, want, we don't want to be so structured that we can't be fluid enough to, uh, to kind of roll the punches if we have to in terms of getting new speakers or changing the format somewhat. But let me just say, I think this is, uh, you know, several weeks ago, uh, Jason, released the, the latest shots fired map uh, that was very sobering for our entire community. While we are experiencing an, a, an uptick in shots fired, we are certainly blessed compared to many communities and we feel it is important to start to lead a community dialogue uh, before uh, the situation gets out of control and we can't do anything about it. Let me say uh, that while Billy and Jason are here to support our efforts, and they're certainly an integral part of it, uh, they are one piece of it. This is not all about the EPD. This is not all about a city administration. It is literally about getting the entire community at the table and exchanging ideas about how we can be more constructive in our fight against crime. So with that, I'll take questions or I can hand it over to Billy or whatever you all like to do. Um, I hope we get people who have, have really well thought out ideas about uh, programs that can either be implemented through the police department, through a neighborhood organization, through the school corporation, through the city administration. Um, we don't have all the ideas, but we need to recognize good ideas when we see them. And so it's hard to say today what we think we might hear, but what we do expect are people to come to these meetings and have a very candid, respectful dialogue and exchange of ideas about how, as a community, we can be better. Just in lieu of the traveling 
City Hall in addition to the traveling city? The first, uh, this year, they will be in addition to the traveling city halls. In all wards? In all wards. How difficult is it going to be with certain sectors, uh, sectors of our community who are, have some hesitance with talking with the police for one reason or another, the whole no snitch culture, I mean, this is a little bit of a branch off of that. You know, I think that's why it's important that we have just more than the police department in these in these discussions. We are uh, reaching out as we speak to people from all over the community, from all walks of life. And that's why it's important that we have someone from the fourth ward who's going to talk about why it's important to get involved. That's why it's important to have someone from the fourth ward to talk about why we should care. Uh, the police department's perspective on this, I believe, is fairly obvious. But there does need to be encouragement from all sectors of the community to participate in this discussion. When you saw that uh, most recent shots fired map, I believe the number runs up to 651 uh, through July, immediate reactions, uh, immediate uh, kind of thoughts that you when you saw that? Uh, my immediate thought was, um, you know, this is happening in Evansville like it's happening in other cities. Uh, the difference so far is that uh, things haven't escalated to a point where the community is really in a downward spiral. Uh, we are not at that point. And it is my sincere hope that these series of community conversations will prevent us from getting to that point where we are, are where some communities are at, frankly. And um, so uh, I guess I wasn't surprised, but it's, Evansville is not unlike many other cities in the country. You see uptick in violence, an uptick in shots fired in cities all across the country. It's where our society is today, and that's why we feel it's important to have organizations from all across the city at the table and as a part of these discussions. It can't just be the EPD. I know that uh, I know that this is stemming from the issues that are happening here in Evansville. But when you see what happened, in, and not connected to, but when you see what's happening in Bergson and how quickly things can escalate and get out of hand, does that scare you? When I see what happens in communities like Ferguson, it, it is uh, it, it takes my breath away. It takes my breath away. Um, but I do feel that there is a such a great sense of collaboration and community spirit here that I, I, I hope, my fondest and dearest hope is that we could never get to that point. But you never know. You never know. And so that's why uh, we feel that once we start sharing what the EP do, EPD does on a daily basis on the community policing front, what other, how other organizations feel about the importance of getting involved, um, you, you know, we want there to be such healthy dialogue in our community that, heaven forbid, when something dramatic really happens here, that w we can stem the tide before it gets out of control. Is it your hope that, um, you know, some community leaders, for example, the concerned clergy of Evansville, attend these meetings and help facilitate some of these meetings as well? Absolutely. I, I, as people know, I, I attend uh, a lot of different churches. Uh, Carol and I are frequent visitors to churches in the center city. And I can tell you, I've heard every pastor in the center city talk about the importance of decreasing criminal activity in our community. They can only do so much. They're one piece of the puzzle, but you know, I don't think it will surprise many people that you know, the people they're preaching to, or the, preaching, the people they're preaching about aren't necessarily in church. And so they have a role, but they have a limited role. But, but they have a role that works with the police department and other community organizations, and together we all can, I think, create a really healthy dialogue that, that will help the community. Chief, this is part of the strategy to also uh, address one-on-one -on -one contacts between officers and, and the public. What we'll be doing along that line. But it's not 
for any set thing. We're, we're open to any ideas that are out there. We're going to talk about a lot of the different things that we currently do, and a lot of those are on the one-on-one. -on -one. You know, our neighborhood meetings, we have officers that know the neighbors intricately. I, I had, back when I was a CPO, um, friends, and one of the neighborhood presidents passed away, and she was almost like a grandma to me when she did. So we have those connections, and we want to build on those connections, our coffee with a cop. Uh, we had that yesterday morning, and that's where people can just come in and talk to us, ask questions. Um, give us tips and that we see this as just one more way that we can get out reach out to people ask for their input ask for their suggestions and I mean, we've we've said several times it's a team this is a partnership the police aren't going to be able to fix all the problems we, we have to work together and we want to work together so hopefully these will be just one more step to help us along that path I don't know you're meeting with uh, Reverend Arnold this Friday, I believe, and you do that once a month. Yes. How, how, how helpful is that to have that dialogue? Uh, it's been really great. I, I didn't know him well at all when I first became chief. Um, now I think both of us consider each other friends. We get together once a month. Um, sometimes one of us has to reschedule, or sometimes we get together more than that. Um, but I think we have a real good relationship. We trust each other. We openly talk to each other about issues. So, yeah, I think we've got a real good relationship, and hopefully he'll attend these also. And the main that I completely agree with that. I, th I think his motives and mine are, are the same. We want a safe community. We want a community that trusts each other. And it, it works both ways, from the community trusting the police and the police trusting the community. And I, I think we have that here. I think we've got a good community, but we can always improve. And, and uh, you obviously, coming from uh, uh, being an SRO at Bossy and Jason, you growing up uh, in, in the city, the south side, I mean, do you feel like those experiences help you to you know, you know, discuss things on a level with people growing up in that area, people living in that area, because you've been there, you've, you've worked there for years of your lives? Oh, absolutely. I think life experiences any time. And, and when you get familiar with something or a person or an object, and familiar helps. And, you know, I, I didn't grow up in the greatest conditions. I, I was lower middle class, um, went to McGarry Middle School, and so working in areas that have problems like that doesn't affect me. It, it's something I've grown up with and Jason the same way. It's So I think those experiences do help and it, it lets people relate with you more. 